welcome to the in-depth series of Drishti IAS. My name is Pooja Devedi. As human sacrifice has become the buzzword since the past few days, it enrages us that a practice like this still exists. So we have to talk about this particular segment from the perspective of mains as well as that of course GS mains paper third and fourth and from the perspective of film certain laws are important. Moving ahead let's talk about the points of discussion that we have to consider. These are the many points of discussion that we have to go through step by step. First of all, let us in brief know about what is human sacrifice. When a human or more than one human are killed as an offering of human being to a deity, it is known as human sacrifice. Mainly this is done to gain something and it is related to the recognition of human blood as, as the sacrifice life force. Okay, it works on this particular principle. Moving ahead, let's talk about the origin wells. Well, little is, it is, it is known about this practice before the Neolithic revolution 12,000 years ago. In Asia Minor and the Tigris Euphrates Crescent, fertility for and the need for successful harvest showed that these two were the main causes of human sacrifice. Moving ahead, let's talk about the background of the Ilanthur case. Certain women went missing. NFIR for missing was registered. Then three people were taken into custody by the Kerala police on the basis of that. Main accused Muhammad Shafi alias Rashid and through him they got the police got to know about Bhagawal Singh and his wife Laila of Elanthur village. When it happened, it shocked the entire nation when their confession happened. They confessed to having killed these missing women. And not only that, but they also confessed that they killed another victim in a similar fashion in June of this year. Then they were taken into custody and arrested on October 11th for human sacrifice of the two women. Moving ahead, let's talk about a bit about them. So that we have to understand, you do not need the gory details of it and the macabre details of it. You can read it, but I wouldn't tell you it's not important for the examination. The remains of the two women were exhumed from near the couple's house. I can just tell you the bodies were cut into pieces and sprinkled over with salt, buried and then so that the police does not sense their the burial's presence over there. Turmeric saplings were also planted over that area. Special investigation team was constituted because it was seen that the police is delaying the response and when that happened the accused were sent into judicial custody. Reports have come that those who are in judicial custody are not behaving normally. Moving ahead, let's talk about N NCRB's number. With respect to killings related to witchcraft, witch hunting and human sacrifice. In 2021, the 2021 report says that six deaths were linked to human sacrifice. Of which, other than that, witchcraft had 868 killings. Chhattisgarh topped in these cases. Apart from that, we have Second, Madhya Pradesh and Telangana with 11 and 3rd. Kerala saw two cases of human sacrifice and it's something like this is not new in Kerala. Recently, a woman in Palakkar, she slit the throat of her own 6-year-old child. Just can you imagine, that was a human sacrifice. Can you imagine the extent of such evil practices in Kerala and not in Kerala but Chhattisgarh, Pan-India. In 2020, 88 deaths occurred due to witchcraft, 11 died as a part of human sacrifices. But NCRB doesn't provide the details of occult related crimes in the country. And it doesn't state if the overall figure includes victims of witch hunting attacks, which is very appalling because India is seeing such cases. And if NCRB, the central agency, wouldn't take into cognizance such incidences, how will we have a central law over this? Because these cases are on the rise. 12 states, according to a private study that was conducted, 12 states reported cases of witch branding, which branding means claiming that some a woman or a man, even a man, is a witch. 2300 murders of so-called witches were committed between 1999 and 2013. These all are data from a private study. Moving ahead, let us talk about the status in Kerala. See, there are a lot of incidents that have been reported data is inclined towards such cases but police report says that majority of the incidents take place in the countryside area 
A. Hemchandran prepared a working draft of the Kerala Exploitation by Superstition Bill in 2014, in which it said that elements involved in invoking supernatural powers for wrongful gratification should be punished, and that could be from monetary or sexual nature. Offences are cognizable as well as non bailable so stringent punishments were given in this particular draft bill exempted it although exempted traditions ceremonies and rituals associated with the places of worship so harmless practices were eliminated from the ambit of the bill moving ahead the kerala shastra sahitya parishad also submitted a draft superstitious and evil practices bill again mla k sivadasan Nair moved a calling attention motion against such practices, such evil superstitious practices. Anti superstition law was being prepared, but none, write it down, none saw the light of the day. So, this is the problem. Moving ahead, let's talk about laws in India. There is no particular central law in India that explicitly punishes witchcraft, superstition, or occult inspired activities. Of course, Indian Penal Code, of course, has provisions for murder. So murder kidnapping and the rest. In 2016, MP Raghav Lakhanpal introduced the prevention of witch hunting bill in Lok Sabha. And there were punishment for accusing or identifying any woman as a witch because these witch branding, witch hunting, this is basically targeted violence against women. And this is very prevalent in the countryside and rural areas. Use of criminal force against a woman, torture, humiliation on the pretext of performing witchcraft, that is that means if somebody is claiming that I am a witch doctor, I can take out the witch from this body which is possessed and because of that torturing and harassment and abuse has happened, the person will also be arrested and fined. The IPC has provisions for murder and the rest, but not for harming others via furthering superstition and outdated beliefs. This is not under the ambit of IPC, that is why we need a central law. But certain states have laws with respect to this. Bihar was the first ever state to take into cognizance the, the importance of a law. So it came up with the Prevention of Witch Practices Act in October 1999. And here it talks about identification of a woman as a witch and eliminate torture. You cannot torture some person by saying that they are witch, witch branding. A witch, it also has a definition who is considered a witch. So that interpretation by the courts can be easy. A witch as a woman who has been identified as a witch by someone else, not by her, but by someone else, having the power or intention of harming any person through the art of black magic, evil eyes or mantras. That means if any person has said that this woman is a witch, there is to be a deemed premise of it that this person is a witch and she can cause harm. So there is a, there is a deemed uh, perspective you can say with respect to this person causing a harm. They, whoever does that, whoever claims or which brand, uh, does witch branding, they can face a jail term of up to three months or a fine of rupees 1000 or both. In case of physical or mental torture, the jail term could be extended to six months and the fine of rupees 2000 and it is cognizable as well as non bailable You can understand when it's cognizable and non bailable how prevalent this issue is in such states and how serious this issue is. Similarly, Jharkhand came up with the Prevention of Witch Dying Practices Act of 2001, but it hasn't been effective. That's not what I'm saying. That is said by the website of the Jharkhand Police. It has not adequately prevented the identification and murder of women labeled as witches. In 2021, the situation was such that the then Chief Justice of the High Court of Jharkhand, Justice Sujit Narayan Prasad, he so moto took no cognizance of an event. This event was the Five, uh, five of family in Gumla, they were killed after village council sentenced them of practicing witchcraft. So the village council sentenced them to death because he thought, sorry, the village council thought that they were practicing witchcraft. Moving ahead, let's talk about Chhattisgarh. In 2005, Chhattisgarh came up with this particular bill. In Chhattisgarh, witches, witches are known as Tonahe. So, Tonahi Pratardna Nivaran Act of 2005 came into being and a person convicted for identifying someone as a witch can go into jail up to three years of rigorous imprisonment with a fine and also it can ex extend to five years if the victim is mentally or physically harassed. So you can see how serious it is. Again, in Odisha, 
the Odisha High Court directed the government, state government, to pass a legislation with respect to witchcraft. Odisha Prevention of Witch Hunting Bill came into being. Provisions were there of imprisonment of up to seven years, and a penalty for offenders who term themselves witch doctor. That means we can cure a person who is, of course, possessed by a witch and a black magician. Somebody who says that um, I am a black magician, self-proclaimed, self-styled black magician. Odisha State Commission for Women sought stringent provisions in the existing act after finding them inadequate. Again, any laws, if any law has served this purpose or not, is of course equalizing the number of convictions that are happening. So we have to understand that it is inadequate. Maharashtra in 2013 presented the Maharashtra Prevention and Eradication of Human Sacrifices and Other Human Evil and Aghori Practices and Black Magic Act of 2013. Because back then, a very important person who was anti-superstitious activist, he was murdered. And he was the founder of Maharashtra and the Shraddha Nirmula Samiti. So, because of this, uh, this particular death of this person, he was uh, killed. That is why this particular bill was brought into being. It wanted to create social awakening and awareness in the society, also creating a healthy and social, safe social environment. It has served with uh, punishments as well, six months to seven years of imprisonment, not less than six months, but up to seven years. The fine could range from rupees 5,000 to rupees 50,000. Moving ahead, in Rajasthan of 2013, the Rajasthan Prevention of Witch Hunting Act of 2015 came into being in which there is a prohibition on witch hunting and practicing witchcraft. The time range of imprisonment could be not less than one year, up to seven years and fine of not less than 50,000. So this is the minimum one. Witch doctors, if somebody is saying that I am a witch doctor, then they have to go through rigorous imprisonment from one to three years and the fine is not less than rupees 10,000. Moving ahead with respect to the next important thing, of uh, this bill of Maharashtra, unnatural death of a woman if it, it is caused by saying that this particular person is a witch and I am a witch doctor, I will take care of this uh, witch. So, what will happen if death occurs because of that? Uh, seven years of imprisonment is there, that is um, uh, that can be extended up to life and the fine is up to rupees 1 lakh. Remember, up to, that means not 1, this is not minimum, this is the maximum limit, up to. In Assam 2015, the Assam Witch Hunting Prohibition Prevention and Protection Act of 2015 came into being, but it got its assent only in 2018. It completely prohibits witch hunting. The jail term is up to seven years. The fine is rupees five lakh, up to five lakh. It stipulates punishment for involving the community and lists the measures the police can take to protect people from witch hunting. So it includes police as well. Moving ahead, let's talk about Karnataka. Karnataka saw the bill only in 2020 because although it was brought into being in 2017 but in 2020 it finally had its particular bill coming becoming an act it bans several practices related to black magic as well as superstition such as forcing a person to walk on fire at fairs then the practice of piercing rods from one side of the jaw to other so this is something that we saw happening in tvs we see happening in tvs so that is also banned in karnataka a court can direct the police to issue the name of person convicted under the act in local newspapers as well, naming and shaming, according to Karnataka bill. Also, inhuman evil practices and black magic in advertisement, practice, propagation or promotion of such activities in violation of the act, imprisonment up to 7 years is there and fine can range from 5,000 to 50,000. What do you think? Tell me in the comment segment, is this enough? Is just bringing laws enough or we need to do something more? Tell me in the comment segment. Kerala, if we talk about Kerala, 2014 draft bill is there and now another bill is there of 2019. The Kerala Law Reforms Commission was formed which was headed by the former Supreme Court Judge K.T. Thomas. This particular bill of 2019, it proposed strict punishment for any kind of evil practices in the name of black magic. There a fine was up to rupees 50,000 and imprisonment up to rupee, up to 7 years. But again it was in cold storage until October 2022 when the government is thinking of to review this because of the rising number of cases related to witchcraft, superstition and the rest. 
More than that, we have to understand that social awakening is important, education is important, and keeping a tab on such history sheeters and chart chart sheeters is important. For policy and law making, we need NCRB to prepare reports which are highly incl inclined towards witchcraft superstitious practices. Then only we will understand and know how the current situation of the country is. As under Article 21, right to life and liberty is important, the government should take a stance and of course the state governments should strengthen whatever acts have been weakened and of course with time period we might be able to eradicate this practice. So Pui and Kuvi refer to what? Language, reservoir, agricultural practice, insect breed. Tell me in the comment segment. That's it for today. Thank you so much for watching.